Hey everybody, welcome once again to the Wrestling Inc. Podcast. I'm Glenn Rubenstein, joined by Chris Calicut and Mr. Matt Morgan, GFW Wrestling Star, here with us tonight to talk about the recap of Monday Night Raw for July 3rd, 2017, the go-home show for Great Balls of Fire. Great to see you, Matt. What'd you think of tonight's show? I thought it was pretty good. I mean, I'm very invested in the Joe Brock stuff, so I'm really just watching it for that, mainly. Yeah. Uh, but, uh... I mean, I don't know if this is indicative of anything, but I did fall asleep toward the very end <laughs> and, and woke up with Rome, you know, uh, during Braun Strowman's promo. Like, I fell asleep during his promo. I woke up like a minute later with uh, Roman Reigns appearing out of nowhere and trying to beat him up and stuff. Ah, that was a, that was a helpful way to end the show tonight. I, I was a big fan of that. Love how they went over the top with Braun Strowman. Uh, so let's go segment by segment, talk about the show. Opened up with a recap of Enzo and Big Cass. Uh, Enzo coming out, cutting a promo there, and setting up that they're going to have a match at Great Balls of Fire uh, with Enzo and Cass. And then when we cut to Big Cass for the reaction after with Charlie Caruso talking to him backstage, Enzo attacks Cass from out of nowhere. Uh, Matt, do you think they could pull off a credible match together, the two of them, given their size difference? Definitely. A big man, small man match is very easy to pull off. Very simple story to tell. It's called Enzo gets his ass kicked the entire match and mounts this insurmountable odds type of comeback. And then the carpet gets yanked out, a la boot to the mush. Mm -hmm. and, uh, game set match. Thanks for playing. Um, at least that's the way it should go. Chris, what do you think? What did you think of uh, the recap and uh, how they're setting things up for Sunday? Uh, Enzo's promo, I think, was one of his best ever. Um, and that's because he was being, I think, actual Enzo the guy and not Enzo the shtick. You know, uh, I, I thought his promo was phenomenal um, because he's out there spitting truth uh, and still moving the story along, too. Uh, he shows he can be the white meat baby face. <laughs> Um, against uh, an emerging heel. So I thought that was really good. Definitely. Um, so we'll see what happens with that Sunday night at Great Balls of Fire when the two of them face off for the first time. Sasha, Banks, and Bailey versus Nia Jax and Alexa Bliss. What would you think of this tonight, Matt, and this tag match that turned into a two-on-one when Bailey got injured? Didn't care for it. Mm. Um, I don't know. Did, did, did nothing for me. It was an average women's filler segment for me. Nothing felt special about it to me. Um, I know this is what they do when, when they get a big singles match coming up. You got to put, you got to show the variations of the tag team matches with the singles people in it. And it's, it's annoying though. I mean, it did, if I could have, I would have fast forwarded it. <laughs> yeah. I think there's, I, I don't get what the motivation is behind this feud, uh, behind this fight between Sasha and Alexa. There's just no stakes whatsoever. It feels like nothing emotional. It's a belt, nothing no, else. Not, not at all. Um, not at this point, anyway. I mean, I honestly think it's still leading up somehow to a uh, Jax Bliss um, match at SummerSlam with possibly Bliss being the babyface. Who knows? Um, but tonight, it's almost like they used Bailey's entrance music to get Sasha over, only to knock Bailey out of the match and make her look completely weak. And then it's like she was an afterthought the rest of the segment. So uh, I didn't really like the way that they booked Bailey here, but they almost gave Sasha the rub by, by Bailey's pop in a way. It's kind of weird. Yeah. Oh, Matt, you're muted. Yeah, Matt pressed that uh, nice little microphone button on that bad boy. <laughs> there, we <go. laughs> there we go. All right, first of all, don't get too comfortable, Chris. Second of all, Sasha, <laughs> Sasha, Sasha Banks' music is way more of a, than Bailey's music. That's, yeah. That's stupid. They didn't use her music or her entrance to help like slide her over more bailey's been getting buried week after week after week after week after week she's the worst person to use as to to, to give a rope to anybody at this call at this moment sasha banks out of all the girls is probably the coolest entrance music there is if you're basing it off of entrances if you're best and if you're basing it off of overness it sure as hell ain't bailey anymore bailey gets yeah. beat her ass beat every week so she ain't she ain't rubbing nobody's yeah. back let alone giving nobody a rub on tv um with that said the match between those two, though, guys, mark my words, is going to be off the friggin' chain. Oh, yeah. Um, it just sucks that they've destroyed Sasha. And I hope, I don't know. I don't know what happens because you know they ain't going to have her beat, at least I don't think so, that they'd have her beat uh, Alexa. I don't know. I just, I, you know, I know we talked about this uh, a couple times, Matt, about how far Sasha and Bailey have fallen. You know, last night I have a friend. No, I know. I know you kind of made it to the finish line on Glow because your wife was a big fan. Um, I have. I've had friends that really love that show. Same here. So I've, been, 
So I've been sending out links to Bailey and Sasha at TakeOver with that promo package. And I'm like, hey, you have to watch this. If you liked Glow, you're going to love this. I was re-watching that last night, just the promo to that match and the entrances to that match at TakeOver Brooklyn. And mm -hmm. it just makes me angry how they've mismanaged mm -hmm. both Bailey and even to a greater degree, Sasha, Sasha on the main roster. Sasha was so – was there any girl more over – Oh, my God. Such a star. That night, that yeah. entrance. I mean, even a WrestleMania entrance, I would say. Oh, yeah. No, it was great. I don't get it. And now, I mean, they're just, it's just, there's no, there's no motivation. There's no character. Even with Alexa, I feel like that's fallen off. Uh, I think Alexa's a really good heel, but yeah, Sasha, I don't get her motivation where she's coming from and all this. They're just, they've thrown development out the window with these six or eight women uh, segments they keep doing, which is not in the case of four women. Um, went from that tonight to teasing up Braun Strowman's going to have some competition later in the evening, not thinking Roman Reigns is in the building, which of course really tells us that Roman Reigns is definitely in the building. Uh, teasing the interview with Samoa Joe and Brock Lesnar. And then we have the first cruiserweight match of the night. Noam Dar versus Cedric Alexander. Uh, surprised with this is Alicia Fox showing back up, but uh, Matt, did this match do anything for you? No, but the, we'll get to the other cruiserweight match. Yes. Cruiserweight yes. Match definitely did, but not this one. This one's I could, couldn't have cared any less. I don't like – I'm probably one of the only ones that don't like Dar. I, everybody seems to like him. I don't. No, no. I'm on your side, Matt. I am not a fan. I hated him in the Cruiserweight Classic, too. He's he's not nearly on the top echelon of workers or personalities in that division for me. Why do they all like him so much? Hey. They give him the accent? <laughs> That's what I think might annoy me the most. Ah, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's a horrible thing to say, say someone's accent annoys me, but it really does. I don't know. Well, but, hey, I'm, I'm a Carolina guy, so I like Cedric Alexander. Plus, he can work his behind off. So, uh, I just don't like this pairing. I wish they'd go ahead and split this up and, and move Cedric up the division a little bit. Yeah, he's money, man. Um, after that, Cedric won that match. And then we had Ms. TV for this week. Okay, so this was kind of complicated. Ms. TV, Ms. is coming out ripping into Dean Ambrose, interrupted by Heath Slater, who wants <laughs> a shot at the IC title. We get Ambrose on commentary. While it's Slater versus The Miz, and of course we got interference from the, the Miz to Raj helping The Miz retain. Um, I can't remember the last time we had a serious, serious uh, Heath Slater singles match, but Matt, what did you think? I thought this was pretty darn good on Heath's part tonight. Heath, I remember Heath was being compared to Edge back in F FCW with his long, he had long hair, but it was red. Uh, yeah. His body type, the way he worked, like, you know, a younger independent on the Indies type of Edge. Um, and he's always been fantastic. Everyone always respects his work. And it's just like, what the hell is he missing that they never give him these opportunities, right? Yeah. Or it's because he's been backed in the corner with all these comedy shticks, right? It's hard to come out of it sometimes. Um, I think that's what's happened to his career, honestly. But um, really quick, we can't roll over this. Yeah. He, he being Miz, absolutely blistered Dean Ambrose tonight. And yes. I agreed with yep. what he said. And I... I guess I wasn't the only one. Everyone called him like the next Roddy Piper. I was thinking like that when I was watching the kid when he was Johnny Moxley. Yeah. Oh, oh my God, he's got such like these, you know? I think everyone, we all thought that. And for him to call him out so quickly in his career as, as somebody who's been failing, you know, and going downhill since, and I'm surprised they went there this early. You know I mean? That's something you do like years later, you know, if, if it's still going this way for the guy. Because he's still a potential main eventer, right, Dean? I'm not saying he's there yet, but again, right now, but he's a potential main eventer. You could steal a main event with him still. Not after what Miz just ripped him with. So, <laughs> so like, I agreed with what he said, but here's the thing. Dean, more than ever, doesn't come out and do the old, now is not the time to do the Price is Right crap or the comedy shtick or the juggling circus bear crap or riding the unicycle, whatever entertainment shtick he tries to do. Tonight is... You know, you, you do care what he said, finally. Yeah. You do care what finally somebody mm. – because you don't care about anything anybody said about you since you've been there. That's what supposedly makes you you. But guess what? That's boring. There's got to be a kill switch, that fifth gear, something that sets you off and pisses you off, and it's worth fighting for, and F it all, run and hit the ring, and absolutely annihilate everybody in there or die trying. That's what we should have seen from him tonight. And we did not see that from him. So if he doesn't care, why do I care? No, instead he got on commentary and put the Miz over for the entire match. <laughs> I didn't get it. I don't get yeah, it. That, that was weird, but it, I don't know, again, you know, like you said, John Motsley, he was this sort of killer, crazy dude, go-getter. I thought that's sort of what they would turn him into, just maybe a little lighter version, 
and he even had like some really good feuds. I even with uh, William Regal, I believe, on FCW before it turned into NXT, uh, which were awesome. And um, it, it, go back and find that on YouTube if you can, guys. But uh, that that was really fun stuff. And he had that sort of same, like you called it, a fifth gear, an extra gear that he could hit. That you know, that was the kill switch. It, 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 he would just completely change into a different guy and, and turn into a different personality, and it it made sense. It was believable. Um, and it made him legitimately crazy instead of just the hokey pokey type of Dean Ambrose that we're getting these days. He doesn't care. If he doesn't care, why should fans care? That's a fair point. And I got to fix the lighting here. This lighting is brutal. Sorry, guys. Give me a second. All right. There we go. <laughs> um, so it's going to be Ambrose versus The Miz again on Sunday at Great Balls of Fire. Um, I just, I don't know. I want to see some, some freshness in this, even if it's the Miz versus Slater going forward, give, put team with somebody else. They have the potential to be really good. This tonight, the energy was good, but I think it just feel like God, they've been doing this since the beginning of the year. If you, we go back to their time on SmackDown, I think it's just time for them to, to rotate the dance partner a little bit. On this yep, and, and they finally went from the comedy and it took them what, six or eight months from SmackDown to raw to get to this personal story the week before the pay-per-view. It's like, couldn't have we have done this or done something with this the last few weeks instead of now? But here's the, that's the thing. Uh, Dean, like, what's the opposite of personalized? He reversed it all. Yeah. yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, this was, he didn't, you, I don't know. It's not the time to act like Joe Cool Guy and like, none of this bothers you. That's the time to act like this does bother me. You know what? There is some things he was saying that's correct and effort. You know what? I'm just, I don't know, something. Something that shows he cares. Right. Yeah, I think SmackDown was a better brand for to showcase Dean. I just feel like he's not. I, I didn't like him on that either. Like he, yeah. I love Dean Ambrose. Out of the three, I by far and away thought he was the biggest star because his promos, his promos were always good. His movement in the ring, his little Axl Rose gyration he would do every once in a while, <laughs> or something was different about him. His yeah. tick, is this tick he had, and I was, I, and he didn't have the best physique, so I was like really rooting for him. You know what I mean? Because I know the other two were always going to be okay. And I don't, I don't get it. Even on SmackDown, bro, I, I'm telling you, I, I didn't. He was still being cutesy, you know, with the stupid plant and all this other crap. And I don't know. Who can forget Mitch, Love right? Mitch, the Mitch plant. He comes in that uh, thing I got. What's that? Um, uh, uh, Slam crate. Slam crate. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, but at least on SmackDown, he—I mean, he was the main event on SmackDown the majority of his run. I feel like he's just getting lost in the shuffle on Raw. With all these other guys, like him and Finn, both are really at a disadvantage. I don't get what Finn did. He's crazy yeah. over. At least he's nothing about him is going back. Is nothing about him is going downhill. No, it's, no. Where Dean is getting so many opportunities on the mic, and that is his bread and butter. Somebody, yeah. I don't know if it's because, to my understanding, he gets a lot of leeway, Dean. So he's got to catch this himself. Yeah, and do something, something a bit more. Um, so we got. Gold dust coming out tonight, and if they haven't announced it yet, I'm assuming Sunday it's going to be our truth versus Gold Dust in a real match. We saw Gold Dust uh, premiere the Shattered Truth. Our Truth ambushed him after that ended, and we're setting up the match. Matt, are you still invested? Are you still looking forward to seeing these guys finally have a proper showcase? We agreed it should have happened a month ago. Mm, yeah, this has gone on way too long. But who knows? I like, seeing, I like seeing Dustin have his own thing. Uh, uh, Goldust have his own thing in the middle of the ring, though. I did yeah. like that. I was, I had hope. But, we'll see what they do. Yeah. They're giving him time. Chris, what'd you think? I mean, they found a way to fit a movie within a TV program, which I thought was creative. Um, but again, you know, it, it was kind of unique in the sense that they gave the camera shots with his own personalized cameraman or whatever. So, I mean, that was cool in a sense. Uh, a little different production value there, but. Um, what I don't like is they gave this. This is probably going to be somewhere stuck in the death spot on the, the main card on Sunday, but mm. the Cruiserweight Championship is going to be on the freaking kickoff show. That, that kind of ticks me off a little bit because of what the Cruiserweight match is, but uh, I like to see two old vets going at it. I mean, I, I think it'll be an okay match. Give them eight to ten minutes and tell a good story. The match, guys, is going to be – I'm, I'm going to step it up one. I think the match is going to be – really good i think it's going to surprise a lot of people but it's unfortunately none of us are invested in it right yeah it's just gone on a bit too long um so tonight the rematch seth rollins versus kurt hawkins 
really this was Seth cutting a promo, just squashing Kurt and setting up what was going to come from Bray later in the night. But what'd you think of this, Matt, tonight with uh, Seth's promo in the ring? Uh, he was over, right? Yeah. As long as Seth is getting cheered, I'm all for it because there was a while there for a long time he wasn't. Right? Everything he felt, yeah. everything he was doing felt forced. You know, he's just not a natural baby face. His moveset is, but, um, you know, his how he talks isn't. Now, I, I, he cut a promo a few weeks ago that was really, I felt heartfelt. And he kind of t- made the turn since then as feeling out this baby face persona and, and who, who he really is as a baby face. He's not really acting like a baby face. He's just like reacting better and more. And he's not trying to act so much. Um, like tonight, he felt very natural on the microphone. Yeah. He felt, he, felt like the, he felt like the bigger star. And I hate to say this, but there was times where Seth would grab the mic and I wouldn't always get that from him. I wouldn't always get when he was a baby face, he was comfortable on the mic. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he, he was, he was definitely comfortable to me, but then the material still was again, white me baby face, but like super hokey because you don't really need to drop the mic after calling somebody a coward. And because the same promo was cut three times in the show. I mean, the word coward was used multiple times. So that, that doesn't really deserve a mic drop. So to me, it was a little cheesy, but again, he got the pop. He uh, felt comfortable. So as long he as he punched him, what do you mean? He didn't like the drain mic drop. He punched him. I thought. Oh, easy. <laughs> Am I making? I mean, seriously, he didn't punch him. Oh, that's true. I'm talking about um after not Hawkins. No, not he. After this, like it was after the match when he dropped the mic on, um, Wyatt's oh, promo. Crap. He didn't punch Bray. Yeah, he punched uh, Hawkins. Oh crap! I gotta go back and watch it. Sorry, guys. It's all good. Yeah, I think uh, we'll see. Bray's promo was interesting. We'll talk about that in a moment. And in a moment, we're going to talk about what some might say was the, the show-stealing match of the night. But first, I want to take a second and thank the sponsor of this episode, HelloFresh. I've heard us talk about it before. They're a farm-to-box company which uses fresh ingredients that inspire great meals. Customizable, healthy weekly menus made with fresh seasonal ingredients shipped right to your door on a flexible delivery schedule. HelloFresh currently offers customers a classic box, a veggie box, and a family box. I've had the veggie box before, which was fantastic. Had some great vegetarian meals I was able to make vegan quite easily. Raj has had the classic box, which which uh, classic box which has had meat in it. Uh, customers can order three, four, or five different meals per week designed for either two or four people. And there's new recipes that come out every week Recipes are fantastic. I really liked what I made. Got to make some flatbread, arugula uh, pizzas. Got to make some spaghetti. Uh, there were some great things in there. There were some uh, Indian dishes. I love the variety. Love the menus. Love the inspiration of things I normally wouldn't cook myself. That it was inspiring me to take chances and take risks in the kitchen. And the meals turned out great. So I'm telling you, what I also really liked about it is that most of the ingredients come fully prepared and ready to go. 30 minutes or less and require minimal equipment. So HelloFresh makes cooking fun so you can focus on the whole experience, not just the final plan. Plate. And each week, HelloFresh creates new delicious recipes, again, that take around 30 minutes. So novices and seasoned home cooks alike can make them if you're short on time. They source the fresh ingredients measured to the exact quantities needed so there's no food waste. And they employ two full-time registered dietitians on staff who review each recipe to ensure it's nutritionally balanced. HelloFresh delivers food right to your doorstep in a recyclable insulated box for free. And they're now offering light summer meals. They've just even introduced breakfast options at less than $10 a meal. So for 30% or for $30 rather off your first week of HelloFresh, visit HelloFresh.com and enter the promo code wrestling 30. That's HelloFresh.com. Enter the promo code wrestling 30 HelloFresh, the best meal delivery service out there. And we thank them for sponsoring the wrestling Inc podcast. And here's more the importantly, thing. Glenn, do you, oh, sorry, go ahead, Matt. I'm sorry, you guys. Uh, okay. Uh, Glenn, more importantly, do you cook with a, uh, do you cook naked with a uh, little chef apron? And just kiss, kiss the cook. <laughs> <laughs> no, but perhaps I should. You know, I think I cook with olive oil a lot. I'm afraid of oil splatter. So I like to have some mm. layers. You yeah, know, I just got to say something. First of all, I want to thank the, the sponsor because I've heard of them before. I'm in the bodybuilding industry, right, besides wrestling. And that's actually a really uh, top-notch uh, uh, food uh, delivery company, actually. Very, very well-renowned. But that said, I've got to ask something. Who are the t- I want the job with the two people whose job is to make sure that everything is the nutritional content <laughs> that it says it is. That's, an easy, that's a great job. Oh, absolutely. This but looks you get, good. This looks yeah. good. No, no, this looks good. Send it. This looks good. Send it. What an easy job. I want that job. <laughs> and here's your check while you're saying that. You know. For real. 
you got to figure out the stuff though. I mean, Matt, so obviously look at the shape that you're in. And there are times before that, you know, where I've been able to drop weight and greatly improve my physique uh, before. And it's amazing when you look at recipes and you really try and balance it and you realize what you can cut was substitutions you can make to make things a little bit healthier. There are like all these different diet hacks and shortcuts you can take to have a much more balanced diet. Because if you just go with the old way of doing it, you're going to get too much carbs, too much fat. And you're going to feel so sluggish afterwards. I'll give you guys one right now. Everyone listen. Yeah. It takes seconds. Cut all your salt out of your diet, period. Try to eat everything that's low sodium and yeah. go ahead and get Himalayan sea, Himalayan pink sea salt. Use that on all your stuff. It tastes better. It's healthier for your blood, um, your blood work and your, and your actual body and how it distributes throughout your veins and arteries and all that other good stuff. And it tastes better. It's actually stronger than real salt. And it's actually healthy for you. Absolutely love the Himalayan pink sea salt. Got a grinder of that downstairs in the kitchen. We use that on everything. It's yep. fantastic. Um, so let's talk about the second cruiserweight match. Because for me, God, this talk about surprise of the night, if not yep. match of the night. Yep. yep. Neville versus Mustafa Ali in the ring. Um, and we're not going to skip over the promos we'll talk about in a second, Brock and Paul. But let's just talk about Neville and Mustafa Ali with this. So Neville, the viciousness in this match. I mean, this was... So intense for a cruiserweight match. It really was. I loved – this is everything we – okay, I'll, what's his name, Ali? Yeah, Mustafa Ali. Mustafa's got – there's something still very indirific about his appearance uh, to me. I don't know anything about him, so maybe that's my fault. Um, horrible journalist over here or whatever you want to call me, podcaster. Um, but to me, he's very – just his look, not his work, is very indirific. indirific. But – like what he was doing in that ring with 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 with, with uh, you know the king of cruiserweights was insane. Like the storytelling, this is everything that we say we want out of a cruiserweight match. We say we want something we stick our teeth into. We want something we can emotionally invest in. We don't want them to go bang 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 flip flop and fly. We want them to have a little bit of that, but with some good storytelling. How good was the storytelling where they stopped and paused for that uncomfortable like two or three seconds and stared at each other, and then and then our boy Neville just got pissed it just grabbed him by the face and chucked like it was just really well done the story they told in that match was so damn good and, and ali is you made a fan out of me tonight he is free i love his work it's so good um, ne neville after, selling that ddt oh go back and watch how you could see neville did all the work on that right he right. literally mm -hmm. threw him up mm -hmm. in the air ate it and then did that weird sell that looked so real and good even down to the finish with Neville making that face while doing the submission hold at the end there. I, I, I got to say, I mean, this, if every cruiserweight match was like this, we would never be talking about it. Oh, the cruiserweights are lost in the shuffle. The audience is indifferent. The purple ropes just slow down the momentum. If they brought it like this every single time they went in the ring, I don't think the cruiserweights would be having a problem right now. I mean, Neville, no, yeah, these, two guys, yeah, these two guys complement each other very well. Um, Ali, if, if you watch 205 Live, he's actually quickly becoming one of the, the biggest faces on 205 Live. And just by one match, just like you, Matt, if you've never seen him before, you, you can see why, um, especially with his work. Um, you know, like you said, his, his gear looks a little odd. You know, he's got a little shield or something going on on his, on his vest or whatnot. But, um, you know, it's his like work is fantastic. Thing. He's got like an X-Men. Okay, thing. okay. There you go. Right. But, uh, you know, his work is fantastic. And this match to a broader audience, because apparently 205 is not doing very well in the old ratings department on the network. Um, but this gives Ali some legitimacy um, because he, he got in a lot of offense on somebody who's been extremely dominant in the division. And then Neville still got all of his stuff in because he ended up ransacking him the rest of the match. So, I mean, it, it did well for both guys, in my opinion. He almost beat him two or three different times. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Neville, hats off to Neville, man. I mean, that, that is the epitome of what your job is as a champion. Right. You know? I mean, he – what else has this guy got it? Like, I don't I don't know if I want – he's the whole division. Let's admit it, right? So, pretty much him and Aries and some other guy. Yeah. But it's mainly those two. But what, what do you want to see him leave that division and, be, and, and, and work some of the other guys on the roster that are non-cruiserweight or 205 live guys? Hmm. I don't know. I see. I feel like when that happened last time, Neville was but off TV to treat him the same way. Yeah. That's the problem. I think it's, would you rather be the big fish in a small pond or backstage so, at catering? What I saw was going, he can do that with anybody. Mm -hmm. Seriously. He's that goddamn good. Like he's probably like my favorite. He's right now my top three favorite guy to watch. 
He's so freaking good at everything he does out there. Like, it, I can't even express how hard it is to get somebody else over, yeah. especially a 205 Live guy that's not on Raw very often. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you can see that they're trying to give some other spotlights to the Cruiserweights yeah. because Sasha Banks went over and worked a tag match. You've got Alicia Fox. You've got Titus O'Neil with Akira Tozawa. Uh, they're trying to infiltrate the Cruisers in with the main roster a little bit. Is that going to cross over to them working with the with the heavyweight guys? I don't see it in the near future, but I actually would love to see Neville in, in a big fight against uh, a mid-card champion or something like that, a champion versus champion match to say, hey, even though if you lose, this still gives, hey, the cruiserweights are really good. You know, it sort of, sort of gives a spotlight to the division too. Why can't he beat Miz? Uh, yeah. Oh, I, I, no, I believe he could, and I think he should in, in some sense. But would you think they would actually pull that trigger, though? I, I don't, unfortunately. What a great feud that would be, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. I this think is I'm, the fantasy booking portion of the program, ladies yeah, and gentlemen. Hey, real quick, <laughs> hey, real quick, hey, real quick, you guys. Okay. Remember, I remember telling you guys a few weeks back that my, like, maybe I, I take that back a month or so back that my prediction was what that uh, Jesus Neville would go on to work after the whole Austin Aries storyline. He would go work somebody else for about a month or two, and they would definitely come back to Aries, and they will give Aries his comeuppance. Uh, Aries will serve. Um, Neville has come up as eventually. Is 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 he just no longer? What's his deal? Because I'm not watching 205. With Austin, what's going on? He's not, is he not injured again for a little bit? Or is he uh, yeah, I mean at least storyline injured anyway. They said he has some a few things that he has to has to take care of, and he's going to take some time off. So uh, I would like to see him back at the commentary table if he's injured. I mean he he did really well in that role. I mean keep him relevant. It's true. Yeah. Yeah, well, uh, we'll see if uh, the championship match between Neville and Akira hey, Tozawa can... Uh, where the hell's Raj? <laughs> <laughs> why I, you're stuck with me, Matt. That's why you're stuck with me. No, seriously, where, where is he? He texted me if I'm, if I'm doing this, like he's Big Balls Mahoney and he was going to be doing it too. Where is he? <laughs> is he with, with, was he with, on vacation or something? He's off doing Top Guy stuff. Uh, no, yeah, maybe on vacation. <laughs> <laughs> He's off doing a uh, wrestling website owner stuff. Yeah. <laughs> right. I don't know. I don't know. He's not going to be here Wednesday either folks. So uh spoiler alert. So yeah, maybe, maybe he's taking a, a vacation, which is a very un Raj like thing to do. Yeah. I can't remember the last time Raj was like, Oh, I'm going to be gone for two shows. So he's going to be back Sunday. So yeah. Um, so let's talk about the Brock and Joe promo and segment tonight. Uh, what'd you think to sustain your excitement for this event? Yes. Fuck yes. <laughs> like, Eight-year-old Matt Morgan fan. And I'm fucking friends with, like, excuse my language. I talk to Joe probably once a month, you know what I mean, and just check in. Yeah. I, I'm, I can still morph to eight-year-old Matt Morgan fan and watch this. That's how freaking good they are right now. And, and Joe, I know a lot of, like, I'll read a lot of other websites, or I used to read a lot of other websites when I was working with uh, TNA when I – when I first started there and I'd, I'd read the TV reports, like, Hey, what people said about my match and shit on it or whatever, what have you. And a lot of them would always say, but when it come up to, when it come to Joe, like, Oh, there's Joe yelling again. Uh, 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 and they bitch about it. Let me tell you something. Joe, when is in the proper context and he's intense and yelling, it's not always a bad thing. It's a good thing. Joe in real life. I've watched Joe go bananas and go into our, um, what was it? Our production truck once. Um, and just went nuts on Vince Russo and uh, who else was it? Keith Mitchell and a bunch of people in the ring truck. And he, he, he had his right to do it, by the way. Um, he went bananas on them. And um, it, that was real pissed off Joe. Mm -hmm. What you see on TV, that was him doing it in, shoot, in real life. And so I'm like, so that's how Joe is when he's really pissed off. So I don't know why he always gets a bad rap when people are like, oh, here comes Joe yelling into the microphone again. Sometimes it's, it's warranted. And Joe is one pissed off mofo when he gets mad, man. And, and tonight this worked. For me, it worked. Um, a little funny when he's walking around the hallways, you know, Lesnar, you know, okay. <laughs> but in, in, in the one-on-one -on -one part, he didn't – I loved it. I loved it. I, I thought Brock did a phenomenal job, actually. That At first, I was getting really annoyed that Brock wasn't selling. But eventually, he, you know, he, he was playing the whole um, I'm up here, you're down here thing to perfection and talking more than I expected him. I didn't expect him to have any, that much verbiage. I don't know about you guys, but I didn't expect Brock to 
I expect Paul to deliver those lines that Brock delivered. Yeah, that that was my thing, guys. I mean, right. if you go back and and looked at that backstage promo, thank God Michael Cole was cut out as the moderator pretty quick. But Heyman didn't really have to talk. I mean, it was literally Joe and Lesnar, and they had free reign. They might have had a bullet point here or there, but it was just two two guys jaw jacking back at each other. It was. It felt real. And uh, if I had a bunch of dollar bills right now, I would pretty much just, you know, make it rain because I'm paying for whatever they're selling. <laughs> you know what? I like that. Real, real quick, Glenn, before you start, yeah. one last thing I want to say with this, you guys, was mark my words. I'm not saying because he's, he's a friend or whatever, a coworker, but so was Brock for that matter. Okay. So I know both of these dudes. Samoa Joe is going to surprise a lot of people when he does not back down in that match. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. there's going to come a time in the match where something happens. Mark my words, and, and Joe will not back down. He might be overweight looking. He might not be some of the bodybuilder type looking, but Joe is a legit badass in real life. He can fight. He can scrap. And more importantly, he knows jujitsu. He knows what he's doing. He's not just a brawler. And it's, it makes such an interesting dynamic. And that's what I think I'm most excited for is to see that physical hard hitting style with shoot elements thrown in there i think th i think this is going to surprise a lot of people i know a lot of people are happy about this and want to see it or excited but i think it's going to exceed even their expectations i think it's going to how be long great. do you yeah how long do you think this match goes guys just out of curiosity 18 oh wow okay i'm happy with that with entrances oh okay okay yeah i'll give you that i was going to say maybe a solid 10 uh because lesnar obviously since he's been back not known for his um long matches. Um, his, <laughs> his work rate has, has not been <laughs> the, the best in the world. But this time, if you have a guy that's on par with what you're doing and it can do basically the same exact things, just let them beat the crap out of each other for 10 minutes. And, and whoever wins, wins. It makes both guys look good. That's At least that's my hope. So, Matt, to your point, you know what I love that they've done since Joe's been on the main roster? They brought him in. He said nothing like the first two or three weeks he was there. He just came in beat down Seth, was imposing, right? Then they start talking. They showed how eloquent and loquacious he can be in terms of cutting these intense promos, but he was very mild-mannered, spoken, but he brought the heat with him. So I think, to your point, they've ramped it up perfectly. That now when he's doing the yelling, it's like we've gotten to this level. So we've seen that he's this calm badass, but now he's just unleashed this rage. That's a very good, that's a very good, uh, interesting point that you that you noticed that the, the, the crescendo, if you will. Yeah. Very good. Very good find on you, on your part. Um, the only time, you know, um, remember the Paul Hammond thing when he, when mm -hmm. he put him to Coquina, he was calm as a cucumber. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> that was awesome. Um, yeah. I think they found what worked in NXT and they did a better version of it in the main roster. Normally we talk about how the main roster is like the lesser version of the NXT. This is the better version of what Joe did last summer with Shinsuke. We were, we at least I was. We, we we were worried for a minute there, though. Oh yeah, I, yeah. I mm -hmm. But Go, this could be great. Guy up, he's a freaking beast. What are you doing? As long as he comes out, look, win or lose, I think he's going to come out of this looking like a million bucks on Sunday. Um, I really just, love him to win, but guys, j yeah. guys, just what he did in the Coquina Clutch on the entrance ramp was it last week on yeah. Brock, mm -hmm. and and the fact that Brock was selling the way he did tells me Brock is going to do business with him. I know, yeah, Brock. Yeah. I watched him when he doesn't want to do business with people, and he does not do that shit. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> <laughs> he would have X-nayed that at 2.30 p.m. Yeah. So this is going to be a great match, man. I'm excited. I really am, man, for both guys. It's going to be badass. No, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, potentially great pay-per-view with a terrible name. So, you know, we'll see how. I know, I know, poor. We'll get to it in the last promo when I was falling yeah. asleep. But I heard that's what kind of woke me up. What's his name? We on balls, Ray Balls on fire. <laughs> so Bray Wyatt in the desert. <laughs> Matt, did this turn you around at all on the descent of Bray? No, all it does is you and Raj have ruined him for me. Now I'm watching it with these ridiculous freaking glasses on. I can't watch it as a little eight year old Matt Morgan wrestling fan anymore. And I'm watching it as like you two looking to crack everything <laughs> in it. And I'm like, okay, this is ridiculous. He's in the desert. He's you know, around. This is kind of corny. I wasn't kidding last week, man. Give him a snake. When Jake the Snake put the snake on people, that freaked them the F out. Like, that was a creepy movie. When I was a kid, it was like, oh, my God, the snake. You give Bray a snake, and all of a sudden, he's got something a little more sinister and a little more, you know, spooky to work with. Do you guys remember what WrestleMania was? Jake the Snake, I think it was his first appearance. He put it on George Wells. 
I remember him busting out the steak every time in a big match, but I don't remember <laughs> that one specifically. He like foamed in the mouth at his mouth. <laughs> now oh, realizing I'm in the business with Alcazel, so back when I was a kid, I was like, <laughs> you know, like you're right. That snake that was a big deal. Big deal. I remember, God, I was really like the, the Oakland Alameda Boys and Girls Club on a VHS tape. We watched WrestleMania on an afternoon on VHS. And it was just like, oh my God, Mr. T's in this. You know, it was, but that was like the social event of my year in like uh, 1984 or whatever. You know, it's crazy. I mean, Bray's kind of had some props before. I mean, he had the rocking chair. Obviously, that's not the snake. Rocking chair. But hey, no, no, it was part rocking of the character, chair. though. Hold on, hold on, hold on. It was part of the character, though, was yes. it not? It was part of the mystique. It was because cool. Because he could lead his his brethren from the rocking chair, didn't have to move a finger. Yes. Um, and then then he had a sister that's already been burned to death. Mm. Uh, I mean, he's essentially had multiple props. He's still got the little spider walk thing or whatever. Um, but it, so would would another prop actually make him <laughs> relevant again? Because basically, he said the same thing as he always does tonight, just with a cactus behind him. <laughs> something he needs something. You know, maybe not a cockatoo, a cocoa beware or something. That would be a little too much. But, you know, but a snake, a snake is menacing. And I think it would be seen as a throwback. Just my thought. Very possible. Very possible. Yeah. The rocket chair looked good about 75% of the time. Then other times it was kind of weird that here's a guy. It rocked by itself, Glenn. You can't make this stuff up, man. (laughs) Come on. Uh, Sometimes it it didn't hit. But, okay, so... uh, (laughs) Yeah, Wyatt's gonna say Seth, Seth's gonna look into the eyes of a god on Sunday. So, see how that works out. God, that loses an awful lot. <laughs> an awful lot. Probably the worst track record of any of the major gods. Oh, he's got such a cool ass character. I'm sorry, I like yeah. his character. I just can't, but you, you gotta know the limits to it, Matt. You know this when you're kind of promo, right? It's like you could be like, I'm you're gonna go against me in the ring, and I'm gonna forever change you. You know, this match you're gonna experience that you've never experienced before. But we're gonna go in the ring and I'm a god, and you're gonna look into the eyes of God like, okay, man, a little too far on that one, you know? Better than saying, Listen up, brother. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna be drafted from pillar to post or something corny like that. But at least you could deliver on that. Bray doesn't deliver. No, he won't. He can't be anybody from pillar to post. <laughs> yes, that's the problem. Attainable goals in the ring. That's the key. Um, okay, so Finn Balor versus Cesaro uh, with Sheamus ringside. Interference from Elias Samson, the Ugh. drifter. Ugh. And uh, the Hardys got involved in this. First off, how awesome was that when Finn did the, uh, the kind of dropkick baseball slide off the ropes into Cesaro's knees? I hadn't seen him do that before. I mean, that was amazing. That was pretty cool. This was, this, this, because of the way the finish and everything broke down and how perfectly everything was placed at the end there. Although the yeah. referee took a, you know, there was a lot of shit going on on the outside there for not yeah. to be any kind of DQ. But suspended my disbelief enough. Um, I'll give him a break. I thought this was the match of the night. This was great. I mean, but the interference just Hard, made it a little too. By a little bit, by a smidgen, mm. by the way. Yeah, it was really good. The interference uh, made it weird and took away from it. I mean, this could have been a pay-per-view main event. You no, know. Did, you hear the, did you hear the fans popping? For Elias? Mm-hmm. No, for the no, boom, no, no. bam, bam, the, the layered general. finishers at the very end. When the, when the guys layered their finishes, when you, when you hear it, boom, 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 boom. Each guy hits their finisher, God, mm-hmm. uh, boom, boom. That, that's called layered. You're layering your yeah, finish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyways, dude, the crowd was hot as hell for that. Oh, no, no, not talking about that part. I thought just the interference in the middle when Sheamus gets involved. I mean, before the end, not the end of it, but then when Elias came out, and it looked like Finn was start, was looking a bit early. Like yeah. he looked. Yep, I noticed that too. Yeah. Do you think maybe Elias's guitar wasn't on, but he could hear it in the arena nonetheless, <laughs> maybe. acoustically? Maybe. I, what I hate is that Elias carries that guitar the way no one carries their guitar ever over his shoulder. Looks like he's going to pull a honky-tonk man and beat right. somebody with it, and he never does. Yeah. I wonder if that's on purpose, though. I wonder if we're supposed to be thinking that. Yeah. One day. I just don't – I don't know what's wrong with me, you guys. I, I think the guy looks really good. Uh, he being Elias, he's super aggressive in his heat. Like, you can't ask anything more from him as far as intensity goes. I don't like the character. I don't – it's annoying. When he came oh, out yeah. – I, I, when he came out, I went right in front of my little three-year-old. He started dying laughing. Because that's what I felt like. There was a fart in church when he came out. 
I, I think uh, un unwanted live music is one of the worst things. Yes. Yes. And I don't That's care true. if it's just out and about, if it's when I'm going to the subway, if I'm at the mariachi band, sometimes it comes to your table at the Mexican restaurant, it's just uh, the cover band that's playing when you go to a place and you're like, I didn't know there was music tonight. Now I got to deal with this. Yes. I hate unwanted live music. So it's that it. gets heat for me right there, but it's not, it's not good heat. It's just no. like, oh, this reminds me of something that's just annoying. It is. It's Sadly, bad. this is the better version of his gimmick. I hated it, like hated it in NXT. It's actually getting over this time because with the NXT crowd, you know, they're, they're a bunch of the smart crowd and whatnot. They were saying drift away, drift away for the drifter gimmick, and it was go away heat. I mean, it wasn't legitimate heat. Right. It, what about, man, I, what do you think about, hey, Chris, is Al Valgo Bundo, wouldn't you think he's more over? Absolutely. Love that guy. Love that guy. <laughs> no, but that, that was the best version of the gimmick. I thought that was clever there toward the end of his NXT run. <laughs> do, you, uh, do you think, Chris, do you think he's a, do you think he is a main event level star, an intercontinental level star, mid card star? Samson? Um, I would say mid card at best for me. I mean, he has the look of a main event guy. I mean, because he's got the build, he's got the size and he works kind of that main event style that WWE likes. Um, but so, I mean, I, I, I could see him there, but for me, he's just kind of a mid card guy. See how important a character is. It really is. I think yeah. he will get a better character and this will be looked back on like Al sure. Snow with head. Sure. What do you mean? You know? Wasn't, wasn't, wasn't Al most over with that? Was he? I always thought that was with the mannequin. I always thought that was like kind of. Uh... No, I think that would do. People throwing. Well, it was at work, but they threw all those mannequins <laughs> at him, didn't they? DC, like that was a pretty over gimmick. Maybe. More and more than. Yeah, I me. suppose. In the comments, let us know. Let us know what you think of uh, Al Snow's best gimmick. See, I actually think Al Snow got over Matt. I mean, to, I to your point. I think is most over with the fan base when he got involved in Tough Enough. I think that put him on people's radar as a force in the WWE. I think it made him look more like a respected veteran. Yes, but exactly. Not like somebody who's going for a title. Where no, no, he, no. When he had head and he was crazy, he was former tag team champion with mm. Mick Foley, you know, Mankind. Yeah, and maybe that's what I always saw it as, sort of like a bootleg sort of crazy. <laughs> I got a mannequin head. You know, it was like uh, when it was Scotty Too Hotty and Albert doing the worm. You know, it's just those sort of weird gimmicks that. Dude, that worm so over, though. God, that was over. <laughs> it really was. It's insane it was how over fresh. that was. Those fans went bananas for that. That and Rikishi dancing at the end, too. Yeah. Um, so, oh, it, it was announced that it's going to be a 30 minute Iron Man match between the Hardys and Sheamus and Cesaro. Oh, God. But, but how, how with Matt Hardy's hip can he go 30 minutes? I know Jeff will probably be doing most of the work, but both guys wow. have obviously lost a little bit of a step movement-wise, not necessarily in the ring and their work per se, but just mobility. So, I mean, who's going to do most of the work here? It's usually Matt that would be doing it in Jeff's place because Jeff is usually one that's banged up. Matt, he hurt his hip. Well, I mean, he just moves – he moves a little more like a shuffle instead of a walk these days, in, in a sense. Is he hurt? No, I really don't know this. Is he I don't hurt? think he's, like, legitimate hurt, but, uh, I mean, he's just banged up. I, both guys are. I mean, they're, you know, in their early 40s and have been going at it for this extreme style for 20-plus years. Can you believe that? Like, cool, I mean, I don't think fans really get – can really understand this. Think about it. I think especially Jeff. You know what I mean? Don't go on top of ladders for years. Even with TNA, yeah. he was doing crazy – as shit things you know what i mean mm -hmm. and he's still going man no it's it, impressive it's really impressive i don't know how and he's doing it sober i don't know how without any painkiller help or anything it's amazing yep. yeah uh so let's talk about this main event titus rallied apollo apollo cruz uh booker slipped and called him apollo creed briefly again again <laughs> uh apollo cruz versus braun Strowman. Booker, uh, he, can we just get something? Booker T's the shit as an announcer. Uh, I don't know, man. Do you, would you, you rather have David Otunga? Yeah. Would you? Oh, no, 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 no. Because that would be his replacement. 
Booker went, okay, I'm not just saying, I'm not, I'm not trying to plug TNA. It's not even our company's name anymore, so I'm not trying to plug them. But TNA, when he did announce it with Kevin Nash, he was hilarious. Backstage, Booker, hilarious at the monitor. They just needed to let him be Booker. But it, it, on the announcer, I'm telling you, you'll see a whole different person. He's hilarious. Hmm. Um, you could say, okay, he's burying talent, but they'll find a, he can find a way not to do it as well. I've seen him do it both ways. And what he's doing here is like, it just seems hokey. Yeah. You, oh, you gotta love it. Like, yeah, the you like, gotta love it part to me is when it's like he's just got nothing else to say. Yes. Like and he's that's got his little just... three or four catchphrases that he throws in when he's got nothing else. Yeah. It, it's just it, it distracts me. Yeah, I'm with you on that. Uh, so this match tonight. Okay, so I know you fell asleep during it. Let me just uh, hit my beats on this quickly. Loved that Apollo put up a bit of a fight before getting uh, trounced by Braun. Loved that Braun picked him up on the three count twice so he could keep beating him down, even going as far as to lick Apollo's bald head at one point. Um, what? Yeah, dude, you missed like... I gotta watch it. This, I didn't even catch that. This cross over into the uncanny valley of beatdowns of just kind of like, oh my God, they're really going over the top with this and making Braun look like a monster. Because at first I was like, is it wise that Apollo's getting some shots in on the guy that you're trying to build up as this unstoppable force that Roman Reigns might defeat on Sunday? But then no, I mean, Braun got his vengeance in that match and took it to crazy town, uh, pretty hardcore, tossing him into the ambulance at the end before Roman finally came out, came out and they had their face off. But I loved it. I thought it was great, but poor Apollo that this is the slot he's in now, but this I thought was a fantastic showcase for Braun. At the end of the day, he's in the main event though. Okay, That's true. So they believe in him to some, de to some degree to put him in this slot. It, 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 I'm telling you, they think everything through like this, you guys. If they put somebody in that slot, even if it's to just completely job in 30 seconds, it's well thought out that that person's got to be good enough to they have to believe in you somewhat. So at least they're believing in him a little bit. Because, yeah. I mean, to me, Titus really shined here because he, he got a good promo at the very he beginning. When he came out. And then he stood up for his client. You know, he's six foot seven. He's a little closer to Braun's size, right? And he, he gave it a go with Braun, and then Braun beat him down too. So that gives more legitimacy to Strowman uh, because he beat down not only Cruz, but a big guy in O'Neal. But uh, I really liked O'Neal being the, the agent slash manager, whatever you want to call him, that he's playing these days. Um, you know, but I liked it that he stood up for his guy. I mean, that was a neat little wrinkle that I think uh, went a long way for me. It, I, I didn't know what to think of this, you guys. At first, I, actually, yes, I did. I didn't, I didn't like it because the, the whole setup between those two guys, I thought, it was gonna over, I thought he was going to overshadow um, Apollo way too. Hmm. Because he is, this dude's a former All American for U University of Florida player. He's a stud athlete in my oh, home absolutely. state. He's he's huge here, and like he just looks like a beast, man. He looks like a you know a superstar in every sense of the word. And one of my concerns was, and I saw JBL say it on one of those bringing to the table. I was like, finally, somebody else was saying it. He might be too big. You know what I mean? He steals a little bit of his thunder. Your eyes get drawn to him first. So I'm almost wondering if they did it that way on purpose. Hmm. A way to get, you know what I mean, to get him on TV, to do something different with him, um, make people care about him. That's the name of the game. Just make people care about you as a character, one way or the other. Sometimes, most of the time, we see it as wrestling, right? But sometimes it, it can be done in a different context. And maybe this is the context that it needs to happen for us to give a crap about that guy finally. I don't know. Yeah. They just need to put uh, it into the right feud. I think what's going to happen is that Apollo is going to be pissed at Titus. I think the end game for this is an Apollo Titus feud as opposed to. Uh, and, and Apollo goes over. Uh, I mean, yeah. yeah. Right. I mean, yeah. But I think there's mileage left in this if they do it right. I think tonight was good with Titus getting Apollo into this. Maybe they do that a few more times. Titus steers him down the wrong path. Maybe the Titus brand. Well, Titus brand is obviously involved in the cruiserweights now. You know, I don't want to see them break this up too quick. I think it, this has some miles left in it. But guys, how about this? Oh, sorry, Megan. No, no, go ahead, bro. I was gonna say that uh, the standing moonsault that uh, Apollo oh does. How about God. him getting but, kicked into oh, freaking that, oblivion holy shit, tonight? That I mean, that was the moment. Yeah, you got to go back and watch oh, that, man. That, that, no, you no. might have been snoring at that point. <laughs> he, he, you're saying he didn't hit he, somebody. He got kicked. No, Braun kicked him. No, Braun kicked in him the out of the ring, essentially yeah. off of the shooting star. I mean, or thank you for bringing that up. That was uh, audible. Everyone in my household yelling, "Oh my God, holy shit! Can you believe that just happened?" That was. I'm telling you, that's what I'm saying, man. When you said you fell asleep during that, I was like, that was a. I mean, a, for. 
a glorified squash, right? Or let's not say squash for a showcase of Braun to look super dominant. Mm -hmm. They they really went above and beyond. And to do that with Apollo, this was not, you know, local jobber. Right. That they got in. I mean, they did a very credible version of a squash tonight that was entertaining as hell. And I know you guys don't believe this, but I, and I'm telling you this right now, in the long run, this does help Apollo. I know nobody believes that, but it really does. It got him on TV. It got him in a main event scenario. One way or the other, you either have sympathy for the guy or you saw something out of him. He, I'm sure he – did he get anything in tonight? He did. Yeah, absolutely. He, yeah, he was no, one of the few guys to... that actually was able to chop Strowman down. I mean, he's, he's only been a handful of guys to be able to do that, and they let him do that. So, Good. I'm a fan of him. I like Apollo in real life. Um, and I like, I loved him in FCW. I, I liked him before, not FCW, NXT. I liked him before that. But mm -hmm. I just, he's one of those, who, who's he, you know who he reminds me of? Bobby. When Bobby yeah. Lashley <laughs> came to OVW, he was nice as could be, all smiles. And not as smiley as him, but pretty close. And just happy to be here, super duper athlete. And just never really tapped into who he was as, as, as a performer. Bobby's just figured it out now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Lately. You know, that, that's how it works sometimes. Same here. It took me forever. Um, so, yeah, I, I hope for Apollo's sake he can catch it quicker because he's desperately needing that. He's got everything else. You hear everybody say this a million times about other people. He's got every tool in the shed, you know, but yeah, he, he really does. He's got like five sheds worth of tools. <laughs> he's, he, he's so athletic, man. And he's a beast. I can't. I, I tell you guys, it works out in my gym. This dude throws up three fifteen on incline for like twenty reps. It's insane. Jesus, wow, insane. Well, we'll see. I mean, so what's uh, what's Braun's dance card look like after Great Balls of Fire? After Roman, is he supposed to go up against Brock next? Or all bets are off right now, you guys. Yeah. My opinion, because I think this whole Joe thing has caught them. A yeah. little more off guard than they had planned. I, I think mm -hmm. they had planned a one-off, and I don't know. I'm hoping that they're they're, they're they're really listening to their fans right now. I hope they're listening to the fact that they need a champion on that damn show. Yeah. Um, right. I don't, I don't know. I know if Brock loses, I know it screws up a lot of things, right, for, for I guess, Roman. Can't they come back to Roman and Brock if that's what they're looking to get to? Yeah, I mean, they were going to wait for that at Mania, but it uh, looks like they're going to maybe put that a little bit in front, maybe do it at SummerSlam, or at least that is what I've heard lately, um, I mean, or at least do the first version of that at SummerSlam. But I almost wish, like you said, give Strowman a, a better dance partner, or, or if the ambulance match goes well, you can have another match with that, uh, another gimmick or whatever, you know, at SummerSlam. I, I almost wish they wouldn't, but uh, I kind of hope this Joe thing, like you said, makes them – turn their heads a little bit, open their ears a little bit, and, and maybe go a slightly different direction. I mean, yeah, like, is, is Roman versus Brock, in your opinion, you guys, don't let's pretend you didn't hear any rumors. Is that your WrestleMania main event match? Is that, like, for you guys? Is that what not you not for me. Pick? What would no. you like if you have your pick? I mean, it, it depends on where, where you go. I almost think – um, and well, since Cena's coming back on SmackDown tomorrow, I know he's a free agent, but if you do it, Roman versus Cena would be a main event somewhere on, on either Mania or SummerSlam, um, one of your top two pay-per-views. I mean, they've got to do that match at some point, right? I would like to see that match. Yeah. I'd actually like to see that, too. I agree with that. I didn't even think of that. That's a good call. And actually, I think that match could be the reset Roman needs. I think you put yes. a match like that mm -hmm. in there. Confuse the fans a little bit. Not sure how to feel about this. Do you think the fans cheer? I think they, I think they would cheer Cena because he's been away. Yeah, mm -hmm. maybe. Yeah. Is but I'd crazy? go for that. I'd go for that. Absolutely. So I'm looking forward to Great Balls of Fire on Sunday. We're going to be here to talk about it immediately after the show ends. Yeah, Matt, you got to go back and watch that main event tonight uh, for that bump, for that moonsault kick out uh, alone. Worth checking that out. It was something special. But all in all, I got to say uh, – Thought tonight was a pretty darn good Raw for the most part, and I thought that it uh, got better as it went, which is not the problem Raw normally has. So, Matt, aside yeah. from falling asleep, what did you think of the parts of the show you saw? I liked, I liked a lot of it. Um, I keep coming back to the same damn grade, though, honestly. Yeah. Um, I feel, I feel like you know, I'm saying the same thing every week. I give them like a C or C plus or whatever. 
I think C plus. I think it's a three hour thing, man. When's the last time you watched three hours of anything sustained, just sort of wrapped with attention? You know, at the end of the day, it's very hard to hold somebody's attention and have them compelled for three hours. Right. Even in like an NFL game, you can take a nap in the second and third quarters. Yep, that's true. Yeah. Um, So let's quickly talk about some of the other news this week. And again, we will be here Sunday night immediately after Great Balls of Fire ends on the East Coast. Myself, Mr. Matt Morgan, and the return of Mr. Raj Giri will ask him where he's been. The mystery will be solved. Tune in Sunday for answers on that. Uh, So the big news, I know I mentioned this at the top, but Impact Wrestling is now Global Force Wrestling. So, uh, Chris, you probably have the business details. And Matt, I would love to get your reaction to the new name. I mean, look here, guys. Um, Jeff Jarrett, as much as some people rag on him for, you know, putting himself in title situations whenever he's booking or whatever, the guy is an absolute genius because he made a company essentially out of nothing, turned it into a a co-branded with Impact and essentially sold Impact or or sort of rebranded as Global Force Wrestling now as chief creative officer and has stake in the company. So he like made money off a sale and it still has an equity stake in the company to make even more money. So it's like business wise, this is absolutely genius on his part. Is it going to advance the wrestling, the, the, the program and everything that's yet to be determined, but as a business move, Jarrett was a freaking genius on this one. I mean, let's call it spade a spade. I mean, look at the, look at the freaking illustrious, you know, I'm not just saying this to do with my boss. It's just, it's a fact. Look at his damn, look at the law, look at the illustrious like family members that were promoters, you know, from his, his grandmother, Christine, who, who did my camera shut off? Mm-hmm. Sorry. Who Jim Cornette will, will rant and rave about until he's blue in the face that she was this amazing, amazing promoter. Um, and had the respect of everybody, uh, one of the most respected people in the business, uh, to, to Jeff's dad, Jerry, um, who I know he speaks incredibly highly of as well, he being Jimmy, um, and now Jeff, you know what I mean? It's, it's in his blood. It's in his family, right? He's been around it his whole life. He's seen everything. You know, you're not going to pull something. Jeff is the one that you know, you're not going to be able to get things over on Jeff, right? So kudos to him, like you said, man, for, for getting it on both ends with this. Um, at the end of the day, I'm sorry. This was his company to begin with. Right, I, right. I've always seen it. I loved it. I loved Dixie when I was there. She was very good to me and my family, and I'll never say a mean word about her. But um, at the end of the day, I've always looked at this. I think we all did. As this was always Jeff's company. This was always his baby. And um, so it's cool to see him have it back. And that's one of the reasons why I wanted to come back. Um, you know, besides it being 20 minutes drive from my house. Um <laughs> It, in working out with my schedule was that, you know, I wanted to be a part of Jeff. I, I, I like Jeff and I, and I wanted to be a part of something that he was, that he was uh, working on, you know, like when we did that ring King thing uh, where TNA sent a bunch of us over to India at the first time um, a few years back. Um, again, I went there because that was Jeff's project mm-hmm. and I trust in Jeff and Dutch Mantel a lot. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I just think, what's going to be different that that time will tell, right? I know they're desperately trying to make new stars and that's good. That's a good sign. Mm-hmm. Um, these guys have got to be able to, they're being thrown into the deep end and they've got to be able to run with the ball immediately. They can't be stutter stepping. They've got to be ready. You know what I mean? And if they're not, then on to the next, you know what right. I mean? Uh, what's that. been the overall perception since, he's uh came back and basically ran things again and you know what's been the backstage aura since he's came back as i, I can't answer that because like i didn't i i came back predicated on jeff coming back does that make oh, sense okay. like, i got you yeah sure i left for i retired for three years and i was planning on staying retired until i was mm. doing an interview with wade keller and i heard on one of the commercial breaks that jeff jared and dutch mantel were coming back to impact wrestling and they were taking over i was like Wait, what and, you know, so I shot Jeff the text. And I was like, is that really true? And he's like, yeah, man. And I was like, dude, you got to count me in. Is there a way we can work around my work schedule? Is this possible? When you guys do your tapings, that kind of thing. We just stayed in touch. And uh, it was working around my work schedule. You know, I was able to come in on the weekends and do my impact tapings or whenever they needed me and uh, not miss any time with my work because my work is my number one. Um, you know, I work in a plastic surgery uh, medical device business. You know what I mean? That's not something that you just – throw out the door to go wrestle you know what i mean right so 
anyways, long story short, like, so I wasn't around the, 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 the last ending days before Jeff came back in. I, I just know, I can imagine for some of the guys that were, that don't know Jeff, we're probably like, what's, what's this all about? But mainly everybody knows Jeff in some form or fashion. And I think everyone gets that this was his company to begin with. Right. Right. So, I mean, Jeff has an old school philosophy. I know Dutch has an old school philosophy and I still think it works to this day. I absolutely does. I absolutely do. Um, you can modernize certain things, but ultimately there, I will always say there needs to be a good guy. There needs to be a bad guy. Yep. Yeah. Let me ask you a localized question, Matt, as far as here in the Carolinas. Um, obviously, the Hardys left on not-so-great terms, right? Uh, and then, you know, Shane Helms just left the company. Um, and then Trevor Lee, I don't know how familiar you are with him, has kind of been put in an interesting situation with the company. Uh, are they trying to exile North Carolina from uh, Global Force <laughs> Wrestling? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good question. No, I, I highly doubt it. Um, I no, I know that if there were any releases. It was because, I mean, to my understanding, it was because those people were making uh, certain guarantees. I believe. Gotcha. And I know when you come into a company, and if I was the owner of it, I would that'd be the first thing I looked at. What's the contract situation of everybody? And well, wait a minute, I'm not the one who made these contracts for these talents. Somebody before me did, and we sure. need to fix this. Um, that's the only thing I can think of. Um, Shane's got a brilliant mind. From what I, mm -hmm. the little bit of time I saw him when I was there. Um, and I know they like Trevor Lee an awful lot. Good stuff. Cool, man. So, yeah, we'll see. We'll see how it uh, keeps going and what comes up. Now, me, on the other hand, here's a little tidbit for you guys. Yeah. I'm off because I, I got hurt in a um, – what was that match? I had a match versus Kevin Matthews. It was a really good one, a one-night-only match. And um, I don't know what the hell happened, but I thought I tore my lat muscle. Like, it was that bad. After the match, I couldn't take my shirt off. I was, It was brutal. I couldn't get my arm over my head to take my shirt off. And so I watched the next four matches. I asked everybody there, you know, mind the next taping, blah, 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 blah. And uh, I, I just – I got hurt, as a long story short. And uh, because I missed that next taping that I was supposed to be on, that was, like, supposed to set me up for, like, the next friggin' – I don't even know how long, two to three months. Wow. You know? Yeah. But, you know, timing has never been my thing anyway, so <laughs> – it is what it is, you know? So that's why I haven't been on lately. Cool. Yeah. I know some people were asking in the chat about that. So uh, do you have a, a, a estimated date for when do you think you're going to get cleared to come back? I mean, I'm cleared now. It's yeah. just these, these shows were pre-taped. Yeah. And they mm -hmm. were set. They, they, they were like 12, I don't know, not 12, but there was like, yeah, maybe like 10 episodes that, oh, wow. I, that I got cost that I costed myself by getting hurt. Wow. And, uh, and it set things up all through Slam anniversary, even like mm. one of the, I'm not going to say what storyline because then you get, then it's going to take away from the guy <laughs> that the storyline right now. I don't want to do that. Yeah. Cause it's a deserving person. So, but that, that's it. So, uh, you know, when, when, when I'm called upon. Gotcha. Cool. We'll definitely keep a lookout for that. Um, Wednesday, Chris and I are going to be back here to talk about SmackDown. For everything and happens. Dennis, uh, and Dennis will be joining us on oh, Wednesday cool. as well. So we're talking about SmackDown, the July 4th episode, potentially in the top three least watched episodes of the year of WWE programming. So With John Cena's return? And the New Day versus the Usos in a rap battle. Okay, easy Ooh. there. That, that's, that's an interesting counterpoint to a John Cena reference. but <laughs> They're taking all the risks. Oh, and uh, Lana versus Naomi. For the <laughs> third or fourth time, something like yeah, that. Something like that, so we'll see. Uh, so... Matt, anything you want to plug before we take this home here? Uh, yes, I do. Uh, um, everybody been seeing on my Instagram. I just started recently putting stuff up on Twitter. I, I forget all about my Twitter. I apologize. I'm so heavily on Instagram since I've been in like more in depth in the bodybuilding world lately and doing these competitions. It's more on Instagram that, that a lot of these sponsors, um, want you to make posts and things like that. So a lot of my stuff, my stories go on Instagram. You'll see my, my journey that I've, I've, I've been doing to get as shredded and cut as I could for an August 19th men's physique and men's classic physique shows that I'm doing. I'm doing two separate divisions, you know, which is unheard of usually for a guy my size and um, just try to do the best I can. And I'm bringing all the fans on the journey every single day, every day in the morning I wake up and I'm doing my facet cardio. I'm on my Instagram story. I'm talking about it. Um, awesome. And everything I'm filming will be put, uh, posted on a, a, a site called musclesportmag.com. 
or the real muscles uh, magazine out there. It's not one of these little flex corny magazines where everything's fluff and fake and commercials and advertisements. It's real stories by the actual bodybuilders themselves. It's not made up and it's a very well-respected magazine. So I'm honored to be part of that. Um, but uh, coming up, what do I got? Uh, I want to plug 5% nutrition.com for all you know, your pre post and wait, all your pre intra and post workout supplements. Um, Swole o'clock, dope as watches around. We were just talking about Apollo uh, Cruz on here. Go back and watch uh, Raw Talk when he was on it. You'll see him wearing one of those watches. Um, they're friggin' dope as hell. They're, they're big faced watches. They're, they're not too expensive. They're under $200, but they look like they're like a thousand. Um, I strongly suggest you guys check out Swole O'Clock. I know it's a ridiculous name, Swole O'Clock, but it's a really cool watch. Um, check out nutritionsolutions.com. You could see them doing a lot of uh, workouts with Jinder Mahal. So you could see all you haters can see how he's not taking steroids, how he actually does put the work in, God forbid. And um, Nutrition Solutions is both of our sponsors as far as our meal plans go. And you'll see they work out with him every day uh, when he's home on off the road. And they do a lot of cool f- film work with, with Jinder. Um, who else am I need to plug? Uh, la, 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 la. Sorry, I, I can't leave those people out. It's important. Cardello weightlifting belts. My back has been tore up from the business, like nobody's like nobody's business. And um, one of the big things I had an issue with, I couldn't train legs for the last 10 years. This was the first year I've been able to train legs in the gym, and I finally have leg muscles because of that weightlifting belt saving my ass every single leg workout. So Cardillo weightlifting belts as well. Check them out. And that's really it. Obviously, tune in every Thursday night to uh, – uh, Global Force Wrestling now. No longer Impact Wrestling. Global Force Wrestling. Um, I think it's a cool sounding name too, by the way. Um, and the colors are cooler. It's not weird. Yeah, I, I do like the color scheme. I'll give it that. I'll give sweet. it that. No, definitely. Uh, but two guys, a lot of you guys are asking about the new, the new Japan G1 special. Um, oh, yeah. If you'll go back on the uh, website, our boy uh, Joshua Ganyan did some fantastic work on that and Slammiversary. So, Go back and look at his recaps, and he also live tweeted as well. So go back and look at, at some of his work. How good, guys, really quick, D'Angelo Williams freaking killed it. Dude, that was awesome. I just saw the uh, the highlights of it, and because smart, yeah. TNA got the, him, you know, where ESPN, Fox Sports, everybody gathered that uh, social media interest and, and central sports media interest. And my God, the guy has a freaking future in pro wrestling if he wants it. Yes, he does. Dude, that was impressive as hell. His timing, his bow he did, everything he did was exactly what you – it was perfect. He his form was better than some guys that have been working for years. Standing Moonsault was beautiful. Mm-hmm. I just – yeah, he did a good job. And, I mean, hats off to Eli Drake and Chris Masters, obviously. Um, that's not an easy task. Uh, I remember I had to do some things with Pac-Man Jones. That was not easy. Um, but – uh. You know, that dude's a stud athlete, nonetheless, D'Angelo. Um, what was it? Oh, the G1? That was, by the way, I did watch that. That was freaking crazy good. See, that's the thing. I'm going to have to go back and watch that so I can have a, a proper it, it's technique, a uh, you know, review of it. But it was good. Uh, I heard it was positive pretty much all around. And dude, a she- they've already booked for 2018, right? Yes. A she versus, um, uh, obviously, Omega. Mm-hmm. I believe that was that was one match I watched, freaking crazy, um, and then Ishii versus Naito. Does that sound right? Believe so. Crazy good. I watched them on YouTube back to back to back to back. So I was one of those binging things. Um, crazy good, and obviously Cody and Okada was something special as well. It was definitely not on the uh, as good as Kenny Omega's, but still really good nonetheless. And a totally different story he told. Kenny, uh, I mean, Kenny. Uh, Cody, I'm really happy for him. He's really doing he, – he, he's going to start doing some different things, I have a feeling. You know what I mean? Yeah, that was going to be my question to you, Matt. What did you feel about Cody's performance? Is he settling into his non-WWE persona and, and how he's doing his work, you know, outside the big corporation? I think he is, and I think a lot of it is – like, I would never expect him to partake, even though it's my favorite freaking YouTube show, uh, probably one of my favorite shows, period. I say it every week. I love the Elite um, <laughs> on YouTube. My, those are my boys, the Young Bucks. I think they're funny as hell. Everything they do, I die laughing. I'm an easy mark for them. Um, but uh, so, like, I, I was wondering, like, how would Cody play that off? Because I don't know Cody personally. 
Um, you know what I mean? Is he, is he a tight ass? Is he not? Would he be too cool for school? Because he's a former WWE superstar to be on something so lowly like a YouTube series, even though it's super popular. I didn't even mm. think he would get it was popular. You know what I mean? Mm. But he gets it. <laughs> he's smart for hitching his damn trailer to it. Um, very smart. And I think that's changing him. I know that sounds ridiculous, but watch each episode with Cody. Like he gives a different part. He's funny. He's witty. He's um, he's a lot more than what we saw in WWE. That's for sure. And that's usually the story, right? Like mm-hmm. I was Matt Morgan, the stutterer. I mean, I graduated college with a communication degree, magna cum laude. Like I'm the opposite of a stutterer. But same with everybody else who had some stupid character, right? That wasn't really who they were. So, which there's no surprise there. But um. I mean, I, I'm not going to see Elias Sampson hitchhiking on the way to my job tomorrow, I don't think. But, you know. <laughs> Run him over. Get him off my TV. <laughs> I'm horrible. I, I, that's horrible. This guy's just starting off. I'm such a hater. Sorry, Elias. No, I think Cody is definitely shown that there's a lot more to him than what we saw in the limited glimpses in the WWE. But that being said, I know he's really down on his time in the WWE, but you can tell – that he was talented then and making the best of it. Even Stardust, which I know for him was the breaking point. A lot of people think he did a great job. With it. He did as good of a job as you can with a character like that. And I think that now we just- no qu- question. Yeah, no question. I, that would have been it for me. I couldn't have done that. Yeah, and I'm the guy that stuttered. Yeah, right. I couldn't have pulled that off. Or how? What do we, I wouldn't even know where to begin. But what I was going to say is like go back to like Cody's Intercontinental run mm. and him versus Ray Ray, um, him with the mask. I loved him with the mask. When, when people, we made people wear the, the bags over their heads and <laughs> I liked it. Uh, I kind of liked that character. And I was always like, crap, what's going to happen when he's got to take the mask off though, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think uh, he's just getting started with his uh, worldwide domination. Hey, what's the deal? Is he even allowed, is he wrestling for us anymore at Global Force? Is he, what's his deal? Or is he just completely with Ring of Honor and the New Japan? Is that how it works? I, I don't, I don't know. I don't read the shit. I actually do not have the contract negotiations on that one. Uh, you might go talk uh, to your folks there. That might have a little more say than me. <laughs> no, I'm serious. Like, isn't there, there's no there's no stories on there that he was on Impact Wrestling one night and then the next night he's on Ring of Honor. There's not been but, any story. That's he kind of was a free agent there for a little yeah. while, where he was floating a little bit of everywhere. I think he's found his more of a more of a home in an ROH and New Japan now. He's very champion. I was wondering if that means he signed a, a, a full-time contract. Maybe. I haven't seen that story, but it's quite possible. It's pretty ballsy a ring of honor. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we'll see, man. Uh, so check out Mr. Matt Morgan, BP Matt Morgan on Instagram. And if you want to know what BP stands for, uh, check out last week's podcast when Raj asked. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you fucking Raj. <laughs> Love the tweets about that. <laughs> Hashtag guys, guys, I want that as a trending uh, <laughs> on everything. Hashtag fucking Raj. There you go. <laughs> Make it happen, people. Uh, so until next time, folks, on behalf of myself, Mr. Chris Calicut, and of course, Mr. Matt Morgan, I'm Glenn Rubenstein, and we'll see you back here on the Wrestling Inc. podcast. Take care. We don't need you, Raj.